First ball, Hadley. So Richard Hadley has the bowling downwind. It's quite a stiffish northerly breeze. Rebarker looking for the first run. He'll have it too. He'll probably have two, in fact, as Ken Rutherford does the chasing. And logs a good return back to Ian Smith. But the first run's come to, to India in the second over. And it's scored by Prabaka. Hit very fine by Prabaka. This could be the first boundary. The outfield is quick. And Prabaka hitting it just wide of Ian Smith has picked up four runs. Nicely clipped away. Well wide of Smith, as you can see. And no sign of any New Zealand fieldsman there. Sneddon just straying down the league side. And so six runs already off this over. Rahman yet to score, and it'll be Martin Sneddon to bowl the fourth over for New Zealand. And he'll be bowling to Prabaka. Single call for Larson very quick. And... Oh! I'm not sure about that. Did the ball hit the stumps? The ball was... I'd That's like very much to see that again because the ball was loose after um, Smith had taken off the bales. I think he may have taken off these gloves unless he knocked the ball on. Let's watch. You know, he, he threw the ball at the stumps and it was all right. Very clever piece of work by Ian Smith. It was awkward for him, but Rahman is out, and New Zealand have struck early. Mandrake, the new batsman, facing Sneddon. It says Raju on his on his back, but he's borrowed Raju's jersey once again. But it is uh, Sanjay Mandrake. Lofted and just over Andrew Jones. From Prabaka. Well, the field is in, of course, as it has to be in the first 15 overs, but Prabaka really didn't get much on that and just got it over the head of Jones. It's hit in the air, but it's over the top, away out through mid wickets. That should go off to the boundary line. <coughs> Good shot from Manoj Prabaka as Steve Woodward signals four. Well, the Indians prepared to go over the top of uh, the inner ring, as we've seen all tour on this occasion, just picking the ball up. Didn't hit it that well, but this outfield's very quick here at the Basin. Been dry in Wellington, as it, as it has in most other places. It's past Larson in the gully. Danny Morrison's the protection down at third man. Here comes his throw, but they're back for two. So Mandrake goes to four. Martin Crowe does the fielding, shies at the stumps at the bowler's end. If he had hit, Prabaka would have been out. But the throw a bit low for Martin Sneddon to gather in cleanly. Here's Martin Crowe going for a direct hit. I wonder if he'd thrown to Sneddon whether there would have been time for him to take the bales off. Well, it might have been interesting, mightn't it? Nicely forced away this time by Mandrake. Larson has the chase. Jones, they will get there first. And uh, two runs for Mandraker. Just angling it, really, away down back with a point. Nicely cut away by Mandraker. Thompson is the fieldsman. He's got a good throw. They won't try it. Look at that. That's a great throw. Magnificent piece of fielding from Shane Thompson. Prabaka thrashing it away through the covers. That'll go to the fence. It was too wide from Thompson. Well, that's Matt Thompson, think of it. His first ball had a wicket in, Dun in Dunedin. His first ball in Wellington is thrashed through extra cover by Prabaka, who really chases after anything that's tossed up to him. He wants to really get after it if it's thrown up. Well, that's wide again from Morrison. Prabaka manages to get it away down towards third man, but that's Thompson again. Look at this throw. Oh, it's marvellous cricket. That's a fabulous throw. Remember, he's throwing into the wind. And he's right on target again. Mm -hmm. 
Good running here by the Indians. Kevin Larson in quickly from the offside, but he can't prevent a single. And these two pushing on, in fact, the 50. Up for India. This is down the left side. It's gone fairly fine. Martin Stenton covers a lot of territory, but can't stop two. What a marvellous piece of fielding there, because Martin Stedman is not what you might call in the first flush of youth. And I can think of many fielders of his age who would have let that go through. He's not the most athletic, uh, natural mover anyway, but he got both hands to it, kept his eye on the ball, and saved two runs. Oh, short, wide, cut by Mandraker, four runs. Not a good delivery from Thompson. Mandraker cashes in. This has gone fine. This will run away for four. Expensive over this one. This is a much better over for India, isn't it? Uh, that lovely square cut and now a leg glance and um, things really coming on. But when we get a chance in the next over, um, I'm still a little... I mean, the, obviously, the, I suppose the object in it all of giving these runs away in, Canterbury, in um, Christchurch was to try and uh, bring the... Ba side batting up with the chance of victory so they, 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 they would then get themselves out quite but doesn't that really in a sense deny all that's gone on on the first few days of the match well, more runs here back with a point again ken rutherford the man after it they've got two in fact they'll come back for three so this really is proving a good over for india Oh, it's in the air. He could be caught. He is. Martin Crow, mid off. Prabhaka looking to hit Danny Morrison over the top. Just spooned it up in the end. Martin Crow, a straightforward catch at mid off. So the second Indian wicket. And this is how it happened. Trying to hit it over the top, it hit it high on the bat. He didn't get any carry on it at all. Martin Crow, straightforward catch. So Prabhaka, the opening batsman, gone for 36. Did it stop on him a fraction that, do you think? Or would he just play not a very good stroke? I just wondered if it... Um... Yes, the way he played it, one gets that impression, although it doesn't really look like it, does it, Henry? Well, he, he seemed to check his stroke at the last... You know, he hit it, obviously, the wrong place, the bat, part of the bat. But he, he, he checked it, whereas if he'd gone right through with it, he might well have cleared the fielder. The very experienced Dilip Van Saka makes his way to the crease. He's been disappointing this tour, Henry. We had a glimpse of him the other day, didn't we, at uh, Lancaster Park against Australia, when he and um, Azaruddin added 52 pretty good runs. Seems to get his front foot a long way across to the offside and play round his pad, which seems to restrict him hitting the ball that solidly, I suppose. I mean, he's a very good player out of form, but he is getting on a bit, isn't he? Yes, indeed. I mean, he's well into his 30s now. That's exactly what you said. He, he's out. He's out. That was exactly what you said. Uh, coming for playing right round the front pad, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. That front foot came across to the offside. He tried to play around to a straight delivery. And umpire Graham Cowan says that's out. So the third Indian wicket has fallen, and this is how it happened. Very full, cool. look at that front foot. Trying to hit it into the onside, it was straight, hitting, say, middle and leg, and umpire Cowan says, that's out. Well, Henry, we've got Ezra in uh, one ball later than we thought we might have him. Well, I wonder if Vengsaka was wired to us for sound. <laughs> oh, good shot. Beautifully timed by Azaruddin, and that just runs away. That's remarkable. Good shot. Wonderful timing, wasn't it? Absolutely glorious. The stroke of the day to me. A marvellous stroke there. It really was Azaruddin at his best. A beautiful, natural timer of the ball. He just hit through the line, found the gap, and it was as though he sort of caressed it away. It really was lovely. Azaruddin on seven, facing Morrison. Last great batch in the covers. The outfield is quick, but so is Gavin Larson. Two for the Indian captain takes him to nine.
Crow tries at the stumps, but Azruddin is home. It was Jeff Crow. Good, solid, direct hit. Crow moving quickly in from short cover. But Azruddin very quick out of the blocks at the non-striker's end. And he had to be quick, didn't he? No room for error there. So Sneddon has five men inside the circle, four out on the boundary. It's past Hadley in the gully. Thompson can't get to it. It's down to the boundary for four. Good shot. Sneddon just giving, giving Andraker a bit too much width there. A very nicely played cut shot. End of the over. Andraker 36, 92 for three. I think Gavin Larson's run-up described the other day. Peter is a fire walker's run-up, and I think that aptly sums it up, doesn't he? Tiptoes up to the wicket. Yes, he's a wee tippy-toe. But he delivers well, he gets as high as he can, and has a good control of his line and his length, and he really has come on very well during this um, series. He's coming in to, for his first international series. To Crow at mid-wicket, he shines at the stumps, has a direct hit, he's out. Brilliant piece of fielding by the New Zealand captain. And Mandraker has run out. Martin Crow with a sensational piece of fielding picked it up and then had to pivot about 45 degrees and then shy at the stumps at the bowler's end and Mandraker who went for the quick single has run out well you see he hit it too well to Crow it was wide of him but in brilliant fashion Crow ran to his right through to his left and you can't even see Mandraker in the picture just see his bat so if he'd hit it quieter he'd have had more chance because Crow would have had to go and had to have gone further to get it beautiful piece of fielding from Martin Crow and look at a lovely position from Steve Woodward too look how quickly he got around there and back into the Indian batting line of today the 16 year old assassin Tendulkar left out of the game against Australia on Saturday and a testing time for him the 28th over and he does have a run finally Tendulkar and he'll feel better for that as Martin Sneddon does the fielding. Here's Gavin Larson now. Single call for, but no. Yes, they do go in the end. Hadley missed fielding. Azaradine went early, then went back. And in the end, they got it quite safely. So the 100 comes up in the 32nd over. Course nicely well, by this it's a long boundary out there and they'll have time for three as Rutherford did the chasing and it looked effortless from Azaradeen he got three runs for it it's nicely played by Azaradeen that's beautifully timed as Thompson went a bit wide that time and Azaradeen puts it away to the fence for four and that's the total 114 for four at the end of 33. Here's Richard Hadley back into the attack and uh, he's had five very good overs at the beginning of the innings conceding only 10 runs there we are so a difficult time for India to get this man away very experienced knows where to put the ball Well, that's a good ball. Swinging Yorker, and they're both at one end. It's got to be a run out. And Azarudin's gone. The youngster said nothing. Azarudin said, let's go. And the captain keeps going. Run out. Well, absolute tragedy for India. Azarudin hits a very full length delivery. In fact, it was Yorker length to mid on. Takes off for the single. Young Tendalka just sat on his back there. And they were both at the same end. I thought that Tendalka might step out of his crease because it was more important that Azaruddin stay in. He didn't do so. So Azaruddin leaves the park and leaves Tendalka to bat on. Oh boy, there could be some words there later. Let's have a look at it. Well, here we are. Very full length delivery. Dug it out, as you see. Top off. Tendulkar came back again. Ken Rutherford, the man, down to Smith, all on his own, and it was the slow death. So Tendulkar ruminating at the bowler's end as Kapil Dev comes out. That's a major blow for New Zealand. Azaradine was the man who could really have lifted that total. 
Well, yes, I really feel that uh, Tendulkar might be in for a tough time in the dressing room because so vital for India's, India's cause that uh, Azura didn't stay in. And I think a sacrifice would have been appropriate there. Gets a single this time, gets his first run. 14 overs left in the Indian innings. Hadley to Tendulkar. Beautifully driven. That's a magnificent shot. Four runs. Yes, lovely shot from Tendulkar. That's the way to play it. Straight back, straight down the ground. Right up to him and he hit it straight back. Richard Hadley starting the 39th over. Tendulkar heaving away through mid-wicket. Great backs is chasing, but it's well struck. Four runs. So Gavin Larson now to start his ninth over. Tendulkar slogging. It's in the air. Jones is racing around after it. And good fielding by Andrew Jones. Cuts it down to two. Tendulkar really charging Larson. Here he comes again. Oh, that really was humming. That's four. Just about drilled it straight through, Gavin Larson. <laughs> that was a superb shot, really. That was the shot of a batsman who was in, who's been around for a heck of a long time and is prepared to come down the pitch, meet the medium pacer on the half volley and just thump it back past him. That would have been a miracle if Gavin Larson could have got a hand on it. Tendulkar really charging now. Oh, he's lobbed this. That's a clever shot. No. He just held back and just lobbed it over Martin Crowe and short of Danny Morrison. It was a clever shot as long as he didn't try and take two for it. You've always got the feeling that Tendulkar is just a little bit uh, buoyed up by the occasion and, he, and he's carrying on through emotion rather than from the cold realism of technique. But, of course, he's an inexperienced player, a very good player. Capo Dev adding a bit of sanity to the batting, and that's a lovely shot. That's down to the fence for four. So India really starting to prosper now in the 40th over. This has been a very good over indeed for India, with two fours and three other runs taken from it. And Larson still with two balls to go and remember that Larson has bowled very well. Capital Dev just seen there that there was a chance to hit the ball into the biggest gap in the field so it is a problem for Crow now. So it's the youngsters from the respective sides going against each other. 21 year old Shane Thompson against 16 year old Sachin Tendulka. Big hit. Him safely and it's past Jones away to the fence for four more. Indeed a top shot. Well, if you're young and you're brave, you deserve to succeed. That was hit over the head of Martin Crowe, who's at fairly deep mid-on, and into the area which was totally unprotected, but really, Tendulkar is just blazing on his emotion now. He, he's a lovely player, but he's just going for them. And you can see Capel there, there having a word to him, just calming him down, keeping him cool. Tendulkar's 36, facing Thompson, charges again. Oh, a big edge. Ian Smith takes the catch. Graham Cowens didn't even bother to put his finger up. Tendulka knew he'd got the edge. Straight through to Smith. And Tendulka carried on. So Tendulka is out for 36. 163 for six. And in the end, the inexperience of Tendulka costing India another wicket. Well, a brave effort from him, but really... He should have realised that there's still nine overs and a couple of balls to go. And that was more like a 48 over rather than a 40 over slog. Kieran Moray is the new batsman for India. So two experienced players and two hard hitting players out there. So the danger isn't over for New Zealand yet. Thompson to Moray. And that's well run. Moray's been watching Dean Jones and David Boone play. Thompson to Capel Dev, three balls left in the over. Past Hadley at point. 
and it's four. The Indian supporters love that. Short and a little wide from Thompson. Careful Dev just chopping it down through backward point past Richard Hadley. And that's a boundary. It's caught. It was a wide delivery. Moray paying the price for chasing one straight to Rutherford at point. Rutherford having replaced Richard Hadley in that fielding position for this over. Straight to Ken Rutherford. Takes a comfortable catch at about head height. And Morrow's out for a couple. 173 for seven. Here's Thompson, though, bowling very wide. And Morrow could almost be said to be a little bit unlucky that he chased it that wide. It probably should have been called wide or would have been had he not gone wide. And good fortune for New Zealand and for Rutherford and Martin Crowe and Thompson. Keppel Dev is 22. AJ Sham is the new player. And he's out now to face Shane Thompson. Past Jeff Crow, and now they've taken off for the single. Hadley's throw comes to the bowler's end. The danger was down at the wicketkeeper's end, where Kapil Dev was running to. But it's a single for AJ Sharma. He's off the mark. 175 for seven. There's Kapil Dev on strike. Kapil Dev on 23. A lot of the responsibility for a competitive Indian score resting on the shoulders of the experienced Kapil Dev. As Mark Greatbatch's throw is big, too big for Smith. And they get an extra run. Great batch not really realizing that he was throwing downwind there. And that one really took off once he put it up there. It's too big for Smith. So it's 3 to uh, Kapil Dev. He's 26. Sneddon working away into it. Bowling to AJ Sharma. Past Jeff Crow. Larson has to do the fielding. Gets to the ball quickly. Gets his throw in the air. And there's only two runs. That rain, it's drizzle really, isn't it? It's, it's quite thick at the moment, coming in on this brisk northerly. Sneddon's going to continue, ball into Keppel Dev. He hits high, wide and handsome, and out to the fence for four. Well, it looks like they might be going off. Yes, well, maybe you can't see with the glasses, but that's the first qualification for an umpire anyway, is not being able to see, isn't it? So it's quite moist out there. The players are going off ahead of the umpire's discussion about it. So 45 overs and three balls have been bowled as they go off because of the rain. 45 and a half overs gone. We've got uh, four and a half to go. Four overs and three balls. The Indian run rate 4.32. Henry Blofeld has rejoined me. Henry, did you by any chance happen to hear of any announcement regarding a reduction in the number of overs in the innings? My dear thing, I wasn't. I was listening to you, but that will come up very shortly. So it's Sneddon now, bowling to Kapil Dev. Pulled away, just over the top of Jeff Crow, and it's raced off to the boundary for four. Good bold hit from Kapil Dev. But I tell you what, Jeff Crow wasn't far from pulling that one in. My goodness me, that was a marvellous stroke there, wasn't it? He judged it, I mean, he hit it over Jeff Crow, uh, over by, I think, at three feet. And Kapil really is hitting the ball in the way that he used to in his golden days. And it's rather exciting. We've seen some fine strokes. It wouldn't surprise me, Peter, with there was such a short absence, I wouldn't think they will actually knock down the overall number of overs. I think it was five minutes at most, wasn't it? That's right. So the Indian 200 posted as Sneddon bowls to Kapil Dev. Martin Crow takes the sting off it, deflects it, and they'll be able to run two as a consequence because the ball didn't go straight down to Ken Rutherford. But unfortunate that for New Zealand, Martin Crow made a valiant effort to get there. Rutherford had to come in off the long off fence. Headley to Sharma. That's caught. Ian Smith takes the catch as Sharma tried to crash it away through the offside. And AJ Sharma's innings comes to an end with his score at 12 and India 207 for eight in the 47th over. And uh, Sharma walked and umpire Khan just merely had to stick his finger up. I didn't actually know he bothered in the end. Uh, a <laughs> very easy one. And of course, that has almost made it almost certain that we'll only get one more over after this one now, because that was what the Indians didn't want to do, to lose that wicket. We've got Wasson coming out. He's not the worst player. He hit 50, didn't he, in that test match in Auckland? Um, but I think the hands of the clock now are on 25 past one. At half past, it's the cutoff point. So I think there'll be 
uh, just the last ball of this over, and then probably just, well, I think the New Zealanders will make sure there's not time for more than one after that. Big hit by Michael My there. goodness me, what a hit that was. Into the crowd for six, and that'll slow down proceedings. Morrison wants to get through this over in a hurry. It doesn't help when a ball has to be returned from the terraces. My goodness, Peter, what a hit that was. I mean, <laughs> not many players would have played, could have played that. It was a wonderful blow. So it's 2.19 for eight. Still two balls to go in the over. Keppel Dev goes again. Rutherford's lining it up. Oh, it was very nearly a catastrophe in the outfield, but Rutherford took the catch. Jeff Crow just about blocked his view as it came down. But well caught. Both the Indians are leaving the field as if the uh, innings is over. No, Wilson's now going to stay out there. Campbell Dev is out. 2.19 for nine in the 48th over. The umpire's conferring about the time, but look at this again. Look at the near collision. That's Jeff Crow running back there. And Rutherford coming into the picture now. So Narendra I... Hewani coming out at number 11 for India. There's one ball left in this over, which is Morrison's ninth. It's the 48th of the innings. I suppose this is the sort of moment a, a batsman of Hawani's doubtful pedigree he might get an inside or even an outside edge. He looks a fairly, a fairly unlikely figure, doesn't he? Fine leg spin bowler. And gosh, he bowled well against Australia on Saturday, didn't he? Came oh, not hard. 14th over and got Taylor early. It's caught. Well, it will be lunch more or less on time after all. Hawani goes first ball. Hadley gets his second wicket, and India are all out for 221. Hewani caught by Martin Crow from the bowling of Hadley for naught. Full toss. I suppose the only surprising thing, Peter, about that was he actually hit it with the middle of the bat. Well, the innings flagged in the lower order, but a much better effort from India compared to their last game against the Kiwis last Thursday.